Hey, DJ Cupcake, are you ready for another fun day with our chefs in training? Well, hello, Chef Lynette. I sure am. I can't see to see what kind of music we're going to queue up and what kind of food we're going to be knocking out of our kitchen for everyone today. I am really glad that you are here to help me and the other chefs get things going. We aren't quite ready to go solo without your help yet. It's been great to have an expert with us. Well, thank you. Uh, can, you can you tell me what exactly is going on here? Uh, I thought I was supposed to be the assistant minister here at St. John's Lutheran Church today, but, but instead, uh, I'm in the middle of, uh, what do I say? I, I'm in the middle of a food truck party? You got that right. Just look around. There are all kinds of food trucks here today. Tasty Tarts, Paul's Pita Party, Frida's Fried Food Truck, Let Us Eats, Denny's Deli Den. Enough. Enough. I get it. I, get it. I can see I'm in the food truck. But this is really where I'm supposed to be. Huh? What? Over here? Yeah. Oh. Okay. You're good. Thanks. Well. Of course, you are welcome here at our food truck party. You are welcome along with all the other people who are with us here in person and online. Great, but tell me, just what kind of food truck is yours? I mean, with so many different ideas for food trucks these days, I hope, I hope you thought of something really wild and creative to catch people's interest. Well, we thought about doing that you know, putting snow cones on top of waffles or combining burgers and burritos. But in the end, we decided to go for something so basic, everyone would not eat it. And what's that? You have arrived, dear sir, at the On the Roll food truck, where we serve everything on a biscuit, a bun, a bagel, or a roll, because we are on a roll with God. How did you decide on this theme for your food truck? Well, Jesus taught his friends to pray, give us this day our daily bread. So bread is always on our daily menu as a main course. And then we perk things up with the daily specials. You'll find that information in our menu or bulletin. Well, good, good. I I'll look at that. Uh, but first, I'd like to know who I'll be working with here at On The Roll Food Truck. Well, we've had lots of chefs working and learning at our food truck this last week. You can find a list of them in the back of your menu. Uh, I see. They've, they've been great. We don't know how we would have been able to run our food truck without our specialty chefs, our leaders. Maybe they should all stand up, our leaders and our set person so that you can meet them and we can say thank you to them. Thank you. Yay. But I still see a lot more people out there with aprons on. Oh yeah, there are chefs in training and we're really grateful to their moms, dads, grandparents for getting them here every night this past week for chef training. Maybe we should have all of the kids and the grown-ups, their grown-ups, raise their hands really high so you can see and meet them too. 
And after that, you need to meet our musician for today, Mr. Ben Becker. It's great that he's going to play the piano for us, right, DJ Cupcake? You got that right. So what do you think? Are you willing to work with us today to help us dish out some more delicious food for our customers? Sure. I'm willing to stay and help. Sounds like it could be fun. Uh, but does this mean I don't put on my white all this Sunday? Oh, you silly goose. I'd suggest you put on an apron instead. Oh, sounds you're... like a plan to me. Now you're styling. So tell me what you need to know in order to catch up with everybody else. We are on page three. And Chris is going to start where it says, we learned a lot about food and cooking. Oh, my goodness. We learned a lot about food and cooking from yeah, one of my favorite places, the it. Bible. Don't worry. We will tell you all about it. Yeah, but first, maybe you should put on your apron while we take some time to remember that God has made a beautiful world for us to live in complete with lots of good food to eat. Okay, keep going. Take some time there. Mm. Sounds like a plan to me. And maybe while you're catching him up, I'll figure out what we're going to serve up today. I understand we need to be ready to feed lots of people for vacation Bible school luncheon here after church. DJ Cupcake, if you'll take care of the menu planning, you're always better at that than I am. I'll take care of catching our new chef up and all the other chefs who are here with us today. No problem, I'll we'll, see y'all later. Wait, 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 we'll be using a lot of material in our bulletin, the menu. Just be flexible, everybody, with us, and we'll cover most of the material there. Maybe not everything, yeah, not everything in exactly the same order. You'll be able to read the songs that we sing together from the slides up on the screen or from your bulletin. Let's try it out by standing and singing together all things bright and beautiful. And as I said, you'll find in your menu for the day, our bulletin up on the screen. Bye, DJ Cupcake. See you later.
We're going to continue to praise God by singing an old familiar song. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah means praise God. And when it comes to food, we have many reasons to say, yay, God, you have done a great job. So we're going to sing the song all the way through together. And it should be in your bulletin or up on the screen. When we get to the very end, make sure you, you know we're going to sing out. And I have these words for the kids. Here we go. And now, let's use just the first part of this song as a response after the things that we want to say about God. God has done wonderful things for us when it comes to food. In the beginning, long before any of us were born, God created everything. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, water, and sky, fish, birds, animals, and plants. God created plants, glorious plants, of every kind and size to protect the earth and feed every kind of bug and bird, every kind of fish and animal, every kind of person living in every kind of place. Now let's sing. Alleluia, alleluia. God gives us food to taste and enjoy. Sweet food like watermelons and oranges. Crunchy food like apples and carrots. Sour food like lemons and limes. Salty foods like peanuts and pretzels. God wants everyone to have daily bread, enough food to grow strong, enough food to enjoy, and so God places in our hearts a sense of fairness, a desire that no one should go hungry while others have too much to eat. God sent Jesus to show us how to thank God for our food, how to share our food with each other. God sent Jesus to live among us, to remind us of Jesus, uh, to, to remind us of God's commandments, to love God and to love one another. Let's sing the whole song through with a Vacation Bible School and staff singing the part in red and y'all singing the parts in blue. Let's see how we do together, all right? Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. 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 Now we did that so well. This time, let's sing it all the way through. And those of you who are able and feel comfortable can stand up on your part and sit down when the other people are singing. If you don't want to stand up, just raise your hands up high. Okay? 
So this time, we're going to sing the hallelujah, hallelujah part, and they're going to sing the praise ye the Lord part again. Are we ready? Here we go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For all of you who have joined us today to either help out as chefs or to eat at our food truck, we would like to share some of the songs that we've been singing that have kept us humming along together all week. So I'm going to ask our children, first the older ones, to come up and get into place, and then our younger ones to come up and get into place.
All right, everybody, thank you so much for singing. You can go sit with your parents and grandparents, whoever you came with. Yay. So, with all these food trucks, I'm not surprised you've been spending lots of time this week talking about food. We sure have. I guess that makes sense. Everybody, no matter where they live or what they do, have to eat. Yes, and just about everybody I know has something that they like to eat. How about you? One or two of you, raise your hand. Tell me something that you really like to eat. Carol. Pizza. Tim. Ice cream. Ice cream. Tacos. Tacos. Pork and sauerkraut. Pork and sauerkraut. <laughs> Owen. <laughs> Cheeseburgers. Grayson. Hamburgers. Ah, oh, do we have any apples? Okay, Kelly. Chicken. Chicken. All right. Uh, let's see, I'll go for hmm, broccoli rabe, kale, lettuce, radishes. King crab. That kind of stuff. <laughs> All right. I know, you're, you're, you eat on the other side of the palate. <laughs> I think it pleases God very much to know that we like food, that we like to eat, because God made so many good things on earth for us to eat and enjoy. When we eat, we are connected to the earth, to God, and to each other. It also makes sense you've been talking about God and food together because there are lots of stories in the Bible about food. Yes, DJ Cupcake told us that and had a Bible story about food for us every day. I bet I can guess several of them. Well, go ahead. Well, there's the story about Abraham feeding three guests. Nope, not that one, but it's a good guess. Hmm. How about the time God's people ate in a hurry when they escaped slavery from Egypt? Not that one either, but you are getting really close. Hmm. I know, I know. You heard the story about what happened next when God's people got hungry after they left Egypt. They were wandering in the wilderness and there weren't any food pantries, grocery stores or restaurants or food trucks. Bingo. So the people- whoa, 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 Wait, wait, wait. Whenever I hold up a sign, I want everybody to participate in this. Like when I hold up a sign, I want you to say what's on the sign. Here we go. Take what you need. Very good. Can I go on now? Yeah, I think okay. we're ready. Okay. So the people got really mad and complained to Moses and Aaron that they were hungry. Then God made a promise. God said, I will give you bread and meat to eat. You just remember to take what you need. God said, every morning, dew will fall on the ground and turn into flakes that you can gather up and cook into bread. There was just one thing they needed to remember. God told them only to take what you need from one day. Now on the day before the Sabbath, God said, take what you need for two days so you can rest on the seventh day of the week. Food like that, food they had never seen before, must have seemed strange. And the people gathered and cooked it into bread. They called it manna, which means, what is it? Did the people remember to only take what you need? Well, not at first. 
Some people ignored the rule to and stored back a lot. You know what happened after that? It spoiled, right? Yeah, the people had to throw away the extra manna they had gathered and hoarded. I guess they learned to take what you need. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess they learned to take what you need. Just like we can learn to put all, only as much food as we can really eat on our plates. That way we don't take too much food and end up wasting it. Yes, and they learned to trust that God would give them enough bread each day, their daily bread. So that's a good commandment to, or rule to remember, take what you need for today and trust that God will give you what you need for tomorrow. Pastor Bruce, you did such a good job guessing that story in the Bible about food and hungry people wandering in the wilderness. Can you guess another story about someone else who is hungry? Actually, yes, I can. I remember a story about Elijah being hungry when he had to hide from an evil king. You are so right. Maybe everyone can help tell this story too. Please say, Share. Whenever I hold up a sign. First, Elijah hides out by a brook where he can find water, but soon the water dries up and he has to keep moving. He walks all the way to a strange country where people talk and think and act differently, but he hopes someone will remember to share. He sees a woman outside gathering up sticks to make a fire, and he asks her for water. People didn't have much water because it hadn't rained for a really long time, but the woman remembered to, yeah. and she started to go to get Elijah some water. That was very generous of her. But then Elijah asked her to, share and to bring him some bread also. Oh, it's really nervy of him. He must have been really hungry. And the woman told him that there wasn't anyone in the world to help take care of her and her little boy. She told Elijah she had only a little oil and meal left and that she was planning on cooking it and eating one last meal with her son before they both died together from hunger. She wasn't sure she had enough to share. That's really, really sad. Right? No one should have to die because they don't have enough to eat. Elijah told her to trust God. Elijah promised that God would make sure her oil and her meal would never run out. God would make sure she always had just enough. And that's how it went. She remembered to share what she had until it rained again and there was food that grew and could be harvested. She and her son had enough to eat and enough to share with Elijah. Great story. So I have a question for you. Both of these stories were about people who were hungry. Are there stories about people who had way too much food, too many choices? You mean people like we are sometimes here in America? We have so many choices? Well, let's see. Funny you should ask that. Our next story was about Daniel and his three friends when they were taken from their own country to Babylon as valuable prisoners. Now, I, I know where you're headed. I bet your next sign says something like, like, eat healthy. Let's try that, eat healthy. So Daniel and his friends stayed in Babylon where they were learning how to be servants for the king. As a part of their school, they got to eat the same kind of rich food the king ate, 
and they got to eat as much they got to eat as much as they wanted every day. Wow. I bet it was hard to remember to eat with so many choices. Yes. The king got to eat all kinds of rich, fatty, and sweet foods. The king did not necessarily eat healthy. Even though there were lots of different types of food on his table and on the tables of the people who ate when he ate. I bet it was a bit scary for Daniel and his <sighs> friends. They knew that God had given them certain rules about the different kinds of meat they were supposed to eat and not eat as good Jews. They wanted to follow those rules. They weren't sure they could always eat the meat at the king's table. But it was scary to, to say they wanted to turn down the king's food. Even though they were scared, they asked the person in charge if they could eat healthy. They made a deal that if they were strong and healthy 10 days after eating vegetables, but no meat. Not that, no meat, no meat. Oh. Vegetables, pick it up. That's okay, okay. Then they could continue to eat healthy and leave off the meat. Where is the beef? The food they weren't supposed to eat. By eating that way, they could continue to remember that they were part of God's family. I guess whenever we leave off lots of sweet and fatty stuff, when we eat healthy, when we take care of our bodies, then we are being members of God's family also. That was a story about people who had lots of food to choose from. Can you think of another story later on in the Bible about food? Well, Jesus was always eating and enjoying meals with people. Yeah, he ate with all kinds of people, tax collectors and sinners like Matthew. We heard that story last week. With religious folk like the Pharisees. And with friends like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. So are we talking next about any of these stories? No, sorry, but I'll give you a hint. Think about another story when people are hungry. Hmm, I, I got it, I got it. You did this story about Jesus feeding a crowd of over 5,000 people. You are so right. In fact, we sang a song about this story. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Now the words are going to go up on the screen. And our kids really do know the refrain. So here we go. We'll sing the song. Jesus.
get to skip a sign for this story? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. I haven't forgotten the sign. Here it is. Give, Give thanks. thanks. Why that sign? Well, when Jesus <coughs> saw that the little boy was willing to share what he had, he remembered to. Give thanks. That's right. He thanked God for what he did have, the five loaves of bread and the two fish. And whatever we have to eat, and whenever we eat, we can give thanks for it. So that's why all your daily specials this week added up into a prayer people can say before they eat their meals. That's right. We learn this way to give thanks to God whenever we eat a meal. You all might know it. God, God is, is great. great. God, God is good. good. Let, Let us, us thank, thank God, God for, for our food. By God's hands, we are fed. fed. Give, Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Nice. I'll try to remember to and say a blessing like that every time I eat a meal. You can even sing that song we did with the <clears throat> hand chimes, praise and thanksgiving, let everyone bring. It's a good blessing to say or sing before meals, too. So we've got one more story to go. Can you guess our last story? Uh, was it about the meal Jesus had with his friends before he died? Uh, the one where he asked them to remember him? No, but that's a really good guess. We'll be doing that story later this morning when we have communion together. Mm. Uh, what about the meal Jesus had when he thanked God for the food, gave it to two friends, and they realized he was alive again with them? Mm, not that one either, but you are getting very, very close. <sighs> oh, my gosh. This is hard. How about the one when Jesus cooked breakfast for his friends on the beach? Bingo! Yay! Yes, and ta-da! Here's the sun for our last story. Feed others. Jesus' friends weren't quite sure what to do with themselves after he died and rose again. Peter, one of Jesus' friends, said, let go fishing. At least when we're catching fish to take to the market to sell, we are helping to feed others. So they went back to the lake where they had worked before they followed Jesus, and they went fishing. But they didn't catch anything after working all night. They felt pretty discouraged. But in the morning, as the sun was coming up, they saw a man on the beach who told them to try putting their fishing net on the other side of the boat. When they did that, they caught lots of fish. And that's when they realized the person on the shore was Jesus. When they all got ashore, they saw that Jesus had cooked breakfast for them. I guess Jesus liked to feed others so much that he fixed them some fish and bread, just like the time he made sure everybody in the big crowd had fish and bread to eat. Jesus' friends ate, and then Jesus asked Peter, who had made some really big mistakes, mistakes as Jesus' friend, Jesus asks, do you love me? And Peter said, of course I love you. And Jesus said, well, if you love me, then feed my sheep. And then Jesus asked Peter again, do you love me? Peter said yes, and Jesus said, well, if you do. Feed others. 
Jesus asked Peter the same question again, and Peter answered the same way again. I guess by that point, Peter understood that if he loved Jesus, he needed to do the things Jesus would do. He needed to... So you have been really good at guessing all of our stories from Bible school this year. That's what four years of seminary will do. They are all great stories. I guess you could also say they help us remember to trust God and to follow Jesus. How about showing me your signs again? Sure, here they go. Take what you need, share, eat healthy, give thanks, feed others. You know, all those things sound a lot like suggestions for the ways we should live, like rules or commandments. Yeah, when we live that way, when we don't take more than we need so that other people can have enough, when we share what we have, when we eat healthy so our bodies can be strong, when we thank God for our food, and when we make sure others have food to eat, then we are likely to find lots of joy in our lives. I guess that's what you and the kids were singing about earlier. Yes, you are so right. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Listen, thanks so much for helping us get up to speed for work here at the food truck. It's been great to hear the stories you've been talking about all week. And thanks for helping us to remember our stories all over again. And now, let's stand and sing our hymn of the day. You'll find the words up on the screen or in your bulletin. And for the kids, there's a really easy part. We are truly thankful. Let's stand and sing together. Let us say what we believe about God by reading together the Child's Creed, which you will find in your bulletin or up on the screen. I believe in God, who makes the earth and waters it with rain, who grows food of every kind for us to eat and enjoy, beans and potatoes, carrots and corn, apples and bananas. I believe in Jesus, who enjoyed eating meals with his friends and who did not want anyone to go hungry. I believe Jesus still teaches us to share our food with people we know and with people we may never know. I believe the Holy Spirit, 
is the happy feeling inside me who makes me smile and say, thank you, God, for our food. I believe the Holy Spirit is also the hopeful feeling, encouraging me to share my food so that others can be strong and healthy. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray. We ask your blessing, God, for the earth you made and the plants that cover it. Give us enough sunshine and enough rain that our seeds will grow and we will have enough food to eat each day. Take care of the farmers who grow our food, the people who pack, ship, and sell it, and for the people who cook for it for us to eat. Pray for people everywhere who go hungry because others take too much and don't remember to share. We pray for people who are hungry because they are caught up in the middle of fires, floods, droughts, or war. We pray for people who have food but who too are too lonely and to enjoy their food. pray for our leaders everywhere, that they will work to make sure everyone has enough healthy food to eat. We pray for our church, that in the ways we treat each other and in the ways we serve together, we will do what God asks us to do, feed people, body, mind, and spirit. So this week, 
uh, we col our mission project was to get food for the Whitehall Food Pantry. The problems right now with the Whitehall Food Pantry is that their biggest contributor is Second Harvest, and they're having trouble getting food. So all food pantries in six counties are having trouble getting food at this time. So we have the children brought in food in the basket over here all week long, and in our pot, in our pot, we collected an offering, and during the week, we collected the children, brought in $155, and I think that is amazing for the few children that we had, so thank you. We will leave the pot here, and if you feel like you'd like to contribute a monetary donation on your way out, you can please do so. Um, we, tomorrow is our day to be, uh, St. John's Day, to be at the food pantry. So I'll be there off and on most of the day, as well as some of you who come and help volunteer there, and we appreciate that as well. So if you're ever interested in helping, we, we appreciate that. And with the cut in the food stamps lately, um, we do have an increase in number of clients that are coming to the food pantry. We are up to a good 35 plus families a week for four weeks during the month. So that is a definite increase. And uh, we try to provide food. We do have to go and buy food, which is why we take the monetary donations. We buy what we need to have. So I thank you very much for all that you've given. I know you give second Sunday sharing as well, and we appreciate that. We take that up and stock our shelves when we go. And we will take this up tomorrow as well and stock our shelves and um, hopefully be able to feed another 30, 35 families tomorrow night. Thank you. Okay. And the prayer for our offering, please. Dear God, you show us how to share, so no one needs to be hungry. Take what we bring to you today, our love for you and for one another, our songs and prayers, our food and money. Take, bless, and share them, just as Jesus blessed and shared the five loaves and two fishes. Bless and use them so no one goes hungry. Amen. Let us remember another story about Jesus and food. We remember how Jesus ate with his disciples before he died. We remember that we are Jesus' friends too when we share bread and wine together. We call our meals together communion. So let's turn in the bulletin to the great Thanksgiving and share together in communion. And just be aware, the words aren't like they always are. They were written with children in mind. May God be with you. May God be with you too. Let's put away anything that distracts us. Let's give our full attention to God. Let's thank God for everything good. We should thank God and praise God. We should always remember you, God, wherever we are at any time and in any place, at home, at school, at work and play, at night, in the morning, and during the day. Along with the plants and animals, along with every person who lives here on earth, along with those who are with you in heaven, we thank you for creation and for Jesus. We thank you because when Jesus died, you gave him life again so that even today, he can show us how to love you and each other. You are holy. And Jesus is good and holy too, because he is still working with us to make true all the good things you want for the world. We remember, God, how you gave your people manna and quail, enough food for each day as they wandered in the wilderness. When there was no rain in the land and no one had found food to eat, you took care of your prophet Elijah, a widow and her son. You made sure they had enough oil and meal to cook and eat each day. 
He gave Daniel and his friends the courage to ask for and the good sense to eat healthy food. We remember how Jesus took and blessed and shared bread and fish so that a hungry crowd could eat and not go away empty. And we remember that Jesus feeds us and asks us to feed each other. Before Jesus suffered and died, he ate a meal with his friends. At that meal, he took some bread and thanked God for it. Then he broke it and shared it with each one of his friends. He did the same thing with what they were to drink. He asked his friends to remember him always whenever they ate and drank together. Whenever we eat and drink, whenever we thank God and remember Jesus, we are also Jesus' friends. We are people who trust God to fill us up, not just with food that we chew and drink, but with God's love for us and God's hope and purpose within us. As people who are friends with Jesus, let us pray and sing together the prayer he taught us. This is Jesus' table, and everyone is welcome here. We invite you to come forward for bread to eat and wine to drink, or you may come forward simply for a blessing. If you or your child receive, wishes to receive a blessing rather than the bread and wine, let me know when you come forward by crossing your arms this way when you come up. Come and eat. Drink what is good. Come, remember Jesus. Thank you. 
Let's pray. We thank you, generous God, that when we remember Jesus together, when we eat and drink as he asked us to eat and drink, you make our hearts happy and our minds clear. Let us go out from this place to share your good food with others. Amen. Chef Lynette. Oh Chef Lynette. Yes, DJ Cupcake. Well, how did your morning go? Well, I think we did okay. We got this new guy over there to up to speed. I think he knows what we've been doing and the other cooks too. We sang our songs. We told our stories. We even shared a meal together here in church, a meal to remember Jesus. How about you? How was your morning? I must say, I had a great morning looking at all the food you ordered for today and coming up with the menu for today's VBS luncheon. I am so relieved you did that. Thanks for taking care of it. And what are we serving today? Mm, we're going to have lots of good food. We are serving hot dogs, walking tacos. We even have another food truck outside. We also have fruit salad and all kinds of good stuff. There's a snow cone machine food truck outside. And Miss Lynn will give everyone a ticket to go outside to get a snow cone. I just love them. The kids should go outside with a grown-up, though. Well, that's really exciting. And I noticed you kept saying the word outside. Hmm. But before we go, let me offer this blessing. May God, who makes the smallest seeds grow into plants that give us food, may God, who satisfies our deepest hungers, bless you and keep you today and always. Amen. Amen. Well, I got to go prepare the food. I'll see y'all later. Okay. Bye-bye. And you know what? I think we're going to um, let our sending him go and go straight to the slideshow that Jake has prepared. The slideshow will show you what we've done during our on the roll food truck week. And after that, we ask the kids to watch for the people who are moving out. You can have a seat. Have a seat. Watch for the people who are moving out. Please let the people who need time to go first and use your walking feet when we go into Fritz Hall for lunch. After the slideshow, go from this place safe and happy, ready to share God's good food with others. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 